All right. Well, let's try it. Okay. Try it before you buy it. Try it before you buy it. Like at Bandini's. Oh, where everybody's single and the men are real hot. And the ladies also so hot. And everybody, <laughs> they get together and do the hotness. Yeah. Single, ready to shingle. Well, I'm Jason. And I'm Jules. And we, we doing filmographies. filmographies. Okay, everybody, we're doing Trust the Man. Where are we at in Billy Crudup's fucking filmography at this point? Is this like number seven? Trust the Man is the third film this time, so 15? We're on Trust the Man, movie number 16. Yeah. On Billy Crudup's wild filmography ride. <laughs> yeah. Is that what we call it? Yeah. He's Mr. Toad. He's very sloppy, like a wet river. Oh my goodness. Here's the synopses yeah. for Trust the Man. Tom Pollock, David Duchovny, is a retired ad man, stay at home dad, married to Rebecca Pollock, Julianne Moore, an actress doing a play whose brother Toby, Billy Crudup, a sports writer slash color man, is dating her best friend. What's a color man? A color commentary. Oh wow. Her best friend, Elaine, Maggie Joanhall. An aspiring children's author and general idiot who wants to get married after seven years and have babies. Tom cheats on Rebecca with Pamela. Digmara Dominchik? There you a go. single mother whose kids go to the same school. Toby can't commit, so Elaine dumps him and dates Dante, James Legros. Legros? James Legros. And then Gorin, Glenn Fitzgerald. Because he has a big cock. Jasper Bernard, Justin Bartha. Is a fop actor who apparently wants to fuck Rebecca. Faith Faison, Eva Mendez, is married to Rand, Sterling K. Brown, but wants to fuck Toby. Oh, and Gary Shandling and Bob Bellaban show up as the therapists. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> so, good synopses. Thanks. It's uh, from 2005. It's rated R, right? We got uh, Bert, uh, Bart. Bart? Bart? Bart Freundlich. Bart Freundlich teaming back up with our boy Billy. From the, they previously did the wonderful film World Traveler. Yes. Also with Julianne Moore and James Lagrasse. Man, boy, they must really like working with them, except Julianne Moore is his wife. She has no choice. Uh, it apparently had a budget of nine mil. Gross worldwide, 7.3 mil. <laughs> yeah. Tagline. He's doing the best he can. <laughs> Who's doing the best they can? Hard to say. I don't think any of them are. No, no. This movie. <laughs> I, I, I didn't really like this movie. Maybe Maggie Gyllenhaal is doing the best she can. Well, she should get rid of Toby then. She's doing the best, one of the better performances, but uh, boy, her, her part is uh, a clunker. Yeah, you say she's an idiot. Yeah. That was Jules' synopses. That's yeah. not the Google synopses. No, yeah. I, I'm writing them now. I'm taking over. That's pretty good. Yeah. Good for you. I mean, so like the movie starts, right? David Duchovny is married to Julianne Moore. Uh -huh. And they got two kids together. Yeah, I guess. I only remember the boy. I'm trying to poop, but they can't. It's a boy? Is yeah. A boy? He's holding a another kid oh, sure, when yeah. he comes home later. Uh, and her brother, I'm assuming her younger brother, is Billy Crudup in full static X mode uh -huh. with his gelled up pompadour quaff and uh, skeezer guy goatee is it really a pompadour isn't it just like look at my mussy hair maybe it's okay. not great that goatee is real gross Very. so picture a goatee and then picture it uh, longer on the bottom he's a regular old guy fieri i'm guy fieri and then of course billy crudup's dating maggie gyllenhaal who's also apparently julianne moore's best friend yeah because she's dating the her brother i yeah. guess like they're so close, maybe. And, but also, <laughs> Billy Crudup is David Duchovny's best friend. Yeah. Which kind of feels a little, I don't know, convenient, I guess. But I think the better parts of the movie is when they're all either doing their one-on-one -on -one thing or when they're kind of doing their group dinners and such. And you just get a nice little sort of thing here and there, a glance, a, a nod. David Duchovny is an old ad man who quit. To be a stay-at-home dad? He sure did. And Julianne Moore, I guess, had been and continues to be an actor. Yeah, I think I think she did movies. Yeah. And now she's stepping away from movies to do a Broadway play or just a play in general. Mm, yeah, it's hard to say. It, it seems like a pretty big theater that they're in, but it also kind of feels like something from the Guthrie. And then uh, Maggie and Billy, he he's effectively like just a college student it feels like right but 10 years later he's farting he's exactly the same but it's 10 years later he's 35 and this 36 yeah yeah she's like hey can you give me a ride and he goes i oh sweetie i can't today is monday well alternate side is in effect so i gotta move you the car can't give me a ride because you're gonna move the car and he goes yeah and she goes we never use it why do we even have it fucking he likes to know what's there 
And he likes to hang out in there and make paninis? That. But he also was in the car the first time he saw her. Oh, sure. Or they went out on a date or something. And she just goes, oh, you're so dreamy. That's so romantic. You're such a good guy. Yeah. You care about me. Yeah. She's so stupid. I mean, first off, I don't see anything within their relationship that she'd be willing to put all of her chips down for. Well, yeah. I mean, I think we're just not seeing the intimate moments because basically they they share very few scenes together. We don't get a sneak peek into like what's going on there. That's true. It's usually just when she's harping on him and he's like, uh, what? Well, and I guess the only time that we see them together also is while they're establishing what that they, that they're they going to break up. Mm-hmm. He seems kind of self-absorbed. He's childish. He gets her to change out her perfectly suitable book jacket author photo for her bending over and showing cleavage on a beach this is why you think she's an idiot right that's a pretty dumb move to be like oh yeah that's a good idea for a kid's book yes but also for dating him you know and also for having such a ironclad intent to be come inseminated and you know carry a child through incubation into birth yeah and that she would do that with him. Yeah, he, he might end up being a good dad. You never know. Uh, he'll end up being a good daddy long legs. Oh. Is what I, is what I would expect. Uh, hey, I was going to say, C's get degrees, right? Mm-hmm. But titties sell children's books. True that. So, I, I don't remember. Oh, okay. So, David Duchovny wants to have sex. Julianne Moore doesn't. Yeah, this movie... Um depressingly realistic i was i was really feeling this this movie the reason i hate this movie (laughs) is because julianne moore is really the only one later in the movie who has an actual problem everything else is just like man-made they all manufacture these because and for one they're all incredibly well off there's no cares there's no concern billy crudup who seems to be a a wastoid can afford a manhattan shrink He's not smoking any weed, though, right? He uh, just he just is who he is. Yeah, I think we see him drink a little bit, but yeah, he's just... That's when he's living on his he's own. He's just a real... Uh, you what's that? That's when he's living on his own. Right. He has that one beer. He's, he's a real Paul beer. Rudd kind of a guy. What, uh, you don't think David Duchovny is a real problem? His wife won't fuck him. Well, no, that is... I mean, that's a real problem, but it's uh, something that you can at least attempt to communicate. He doesn't talk about it to uh. her. He just says, hey, I want to have you know, doggy style with you. And she's like, I'm not feeling it. Yeah, and he is he, just locking into one position forever and it, trying to get it every day. Every day. How's that work? I think people have sex a lot, but not me. Sure. It, not it, me. It, it, you know, it depends, right? Um, especially after two kids and, what, 10 years of marriage? I mean, the kids aren't that old, but you figure they maybe were together. Maybe they were dating and then they got married because she was pregnant and they're Catholic. I, I don't know, but... But but she's like, you're a sex fiend, and you only want to do it from behind, and I don't want to do that. And I like that scene with Gary Shandling. Do you? I do. I liked Gary Shandling in it. Did you? I did. Oh, wow. He was not working for me, and that earring he had in was quite upsetting. He was surprisingly thin as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's more recent, before he passed away, but more recently, um, he is a little, you know, portly. Yeah, I don't know. He His part's like nothing other than a little funny about how they only come to therapy once a year. Yeah, no, no. It's absolutely nothing. And I wish there was at least one or two more. Bob Balaban got way more screen time and his was actually not that great. Oh, I kind of like Balaban. He's okay. You know, he does his thing. We get a little appearance by, uh, what's his name? He does comedy like this. Jim Gaffigan. Oh, yeah. In the Sex uh, Anonymous place. He's all right in this. Boy, we'll get to that He gets part. one line, I think. He says something like... Great. Sandwich guy's going to pass? Great. Very trusting. Oh, you're going to eat your sandwich and you're not going to talk or something? And then I don't think we hear from him ever again. Yeah, I, I feel like you're slowly ruining the parts that I liked of this movie. I, I'm starting to dislike it quite a bit now, too. I mean, like I said, there's those peppered little things here and there. There's the. It's totally all over the place. Yeah. It's trying to be like a heavy drama, and then it and then it's like slapstick comedy with like music to accompany it the opening credits good lord that was the worst this movie has some of the worst music a movie has com- collected in quite some time that i've seen it's just trash remember how good that static soundtrack was i do god i was thinking about that maybe this reminds me of the other bart soundtrack 
There was some other movie we watched where it was like Lilith Fair. Wasn't that Grind? That was Grind. It's Billy. Billy picks the music for the movies, maybe. (laughs) What if that was the case, dude? Why? And he's just really bad at it. Maybe that's why him and Bart work together. They both like this really shitty type of music. Yeah. So my, my first couple of notes is opening credits. Jesus. Billy's goatee. I hate this. Gary Shandling is thin. Fucking middle class white people. That's valid. And then we've caught up on my notes now, so. I was also, regarding the therapy session, uh, clearly the session just started. And they're like, all right, well, that's it for this time. So it's a 30-second therapy session? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's how that works. You guys (laughs) framed that one real wrong. Well, and also, they say they only go once a year. Yeah. And not only that, but as soon as they leave and Gary's like, hey, hump them a little bit more and. He goes to her, uh, David, maybe don't ask her for sex so much and like look at her. Just like, you fixed the stock and they go out and they're all cutesy. And I mean, those are pretty okay suggestions, Mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. I mean, what's he going to do? Right. Meet in the middle, a little bit more sex. Stop being weird with the sex you do get. Mm hmm. Be intimate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, David's just kind of unhappy. Billy is sort of in best state of mind he as far as he knows everything's peachy keen J- maggie gyllenhaal's starting to see some cracks she's starting to worry they go out to dinner and we run into uh eva mendez and sterling k brown sterling k brown what do i know him from i always oh, recognize gosh. him i go oh that's sterling k brown american crime story so they're out to dinner and a- ava mendez is gorgeous yes you know Sterling K. Brown's gorgeous, too. He's nice looking. Apparently, I, I got the impression that they had dated and then, you know, went their own way. Yeah, but they, no, they Later, just knew they each other. They were friends. Yeah, he says they just knew each other in college, right after the dinner, in fact. So when she walks in, the ladies are talking, Billy and David are talking, and then he sees her, and they start, like, swishing their mouth with wine. And Oh, it's a wine technique for swishing and... <laughs> She comes over and, you know, oh, I'm married. And he goes, oh, yeah, this is my girlfriend. And she's like, are you all going to get married? And he doesn't say anything. And Maggie is just like, oof. <laughs> what is it? What do they say in that in that game? Oof. Are you King Hippo getting hit in the guts and punch <laughs> out? Is that his name? King Hippo? King Hippo. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> yeah. I was doing the oof thing from, what is that game? Roblox? The kids play it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole kerfuffle about kerfuffle, kerfuffle about that uh, sound effect too, oh. and a dick hole named Tommy Tellerico. My my kids can't Jack can't play Roblox or fucking Rec Room. Yeah, keep them off there. He just keeps finding all the scary games. Well, and it's just predatory. Yeah, I believe it. He's always like, "Why can't I talk to people?" Mm, no, <laughs> you never get to talk to the people on the computers, buddy. Uh, but I want to make friends. <laughs> no, you don't. Not get to these be friends. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Julianne Moore cracks a joke. We're married, and it's overrated. What? Uh oh. <laughs> and then you know they leave, and so Maggie, uh, she's talking to Billy, like, "Hey, who is that lady?" And he's like, "Oh, I don't know, whatever." And then he goes, oh, hey, speaking of which, I f- recorded a documentary for you on the TiVo about the Serengeti. And she goes, God damn it. I wanted it about the Ferlinghetti. Ferlinghetti. Look at you. Well, I think it's, it's a, it's, the, it's either the guy who made the, the imprints that he likes, mm. or is he one of the old beat author adjacent people? I have no idea. Oh, I wish I knew more. I should have just gone with you being like, good job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ferlin Getty. I know who that is. Yeah. We'll cut that out. Thanks. <laughs> and so, uh, she's just like, ah, man, uh, whatever. Okay. Dumb boyfriend. I love you. Mm-hmm. And, and it's at this point, I think when she's out with Julianne Moore and she's expressing her incredibly intense desire to have a child. And there's some good stuff going on with Julianne Moore when Maggie Joan Hall's speaking, but not actually looking at her. And she's just like, oh, with Toby? Like, her face just is like, oh, when she does, like, a double look, like, ooh, girl, you know? Hey, do you appreciate the commitment to his facial hair that they don't even get rid of it at the end to signify change? And not only that, <laughs> he doesn't change. And he slicks his hair back as well, yeah, which looks awful. Gross. He's pretty good in this. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he plays this guy really well. The thing is... His, for me, it feels like his uh, take on being aloof is just being a complete moron, childish moron. It, 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 I was getting real flavors of 
Jesus' son in this. I'm glad he's dead. He's the one who started everybody calling me fuckhead. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a couple of moments where he, he, like, he has a whiny voice. And I was like, oh, he sounds just like fuckhead. And he's so daft. I, I think when he comes back from the bathroom at dinner, in fact, he goes, hey, Maggie Gyllenhaal, I finally passed that corn. And the look on her face is just like ultimate betrayal. Was the corn stuck in him? <laughs> or he just monitors Maybe he was poop? constipated? I don't know. Because the, the fellows are talking about it a little bit. And they're like, hey, y'all, you know. Let's not talk about poop while we're eating. Do you uh, talk about poop while you're eating? I eat poop while I'm talking about eating. That makes sense. Right? I think that's a good idea. I am also going to start doing that. Thank you, Julian. <laughs> you're a life changer. Hey, man. Hashtag eat poop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> and so David is buying some porno. Dude, uh, this is one of the best moments in the movie. That the, the newsstand? Yeah, he's trying to point out which magazine he wants, and the guy's like, oh, over here where there's the normal magazines? No, 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 yeah, over, over here, yeah. No, three over. Okay, now two down. Yeah. Oh, shave? Yeah. And what does he go? He says, uh... Ah, good one. <laughs> and then he goes, and then he goes, it's 218 or something, and David gives him some money, and he, and he puts the bag of Skittles on top of the magazine, and he goes, candy for the baby. That's one dollar, and, <laughs> and David's like, "Oh well, thank you." You know, I liked that. Hey, you're not supposed to give candy to babies, God damn it. Especially not. No, that's what I was thinking. I'm an idiot, but I was thinking you can't give that baby. Skittles. Especially not Skittles. What the fuck, man? No, like maybe some melty chocolate, but that's a terrible idea. Too. Maybe a sugar daddy, right? Maybe just squeeze a bunch of honey in that newborn baby's mouth. They say honey is good for newborn babies. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Don't give them grapes either. Botulism. Mm -hmm. We don't ever see him wanking it with the mag though. No, I know. I was really confused when he was like, I'm I'm a sex addict. Nothing nothing in this has ever led me to believe he's a sex addict. He no. seems like a real regular dude. Yeah, because so he doesn't beat it to the mag, but he does one night. So, you know, he goes out with her and I think she's revving to go. And Oh, Julianne Moore? Yeah. And this is that night, isn't it? Isn't them coming home from the, it, the dinner oh, there all together? Oh, it is, all that carbs, right. And so he, he, he goes, and this was perfect. This is like real life here. Yeah. She's looking sexy and he's like, I, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> David Duchovny has got to take a giant shit before well, they fuck. Even if it's just a number one. No, it's You don't want to go into sex with a load of reservoir of urine. But you would say, I got to piss real quick. You might. You wouldn't say, I, I would say, go to the bathroom. I got to go to the washroom. <laughs> Where's the latrine? It's going to smell really <laughs> bad in there. I'm going to have to wash my hole. I got to go wank it to my mag, and then we'll have sex. Yeah. You know, and so he comes. So while he's in there, she just shoves a fistful of cake into her mouth. Can I ask you a question? You may. How do you choke on cake? Good question. I think if anything, it would just immediately absorb all of your saliva, and it would just be stuck in your mouth. Okay. Yeah. You know. But not in your throat, considering it's a mushy? Unless she just tried to swallow it whole. Uh, yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, she had a lot in there, but still. Why do they have cake? I don't know. It was like a it's already my birthday. cut into birthday cake. It's my birthday. That it's figures. for me. That fa of course. That Thank figures. you, Bart. <laughs> and so she needs the Heimlich. He gives it to her, and she just vomits. And she's like, all right, well, I'm, I'm going to go to bed now. And he's like, but my dick, it's still mo moistly erect. Talk about ultimate betrayal. So later on, he's like, you know, you owe me. And she's like, ah. And he goes, look. I got a way where you don't have to do any work. And he brings out a porno tape. <laughs> a porno VHS. Puts it in. And he goes, I'm going to close my eyes. And you describe what's going on. Right? And he starts doing his thing. And she just immediately craps all over it. This guy's dick is green and kind of crooked. It's like twice the size of yours. <laughs> that is a terrible wax that she has. It's all irritated. So much sexual disappointment and misery is my note here. And you can tell he like opens his eyes like, come on, baby. Come on. You know, like just for me. I'm trying to help you not fuck me because you don't want to fuck me. You don't want me inside you. Mm -hmm. Can you do this stupid thing? And not me? only that, but I'm also... If I have to resort to masturbating, I'm at least trying to incorporate you into some semblance of intimacy instead of just hiding in the bathroom, beating it to Skin Jugs magazine or whatever. Well, and plus this is also Roast like, Beef magazine or whatever. This is a very intimate moment, too, because he's bringing her into this weird thing he's into. Yeah, and they could really get a thing going here, you know? She could maybe start doing her thing herself and... 
or she can shame him and make him feel stupid. Mm -hmm. Not even, it's one thing to like be awkward and she just immediately is just like me watching any movie. (laughs) Oh, that's what you're going to wear? Porno's dumb. Uh Uh-huh. Those titties are lopsided. And so he's like, fuck it. (laughs) But they're doing the thing I want to do. Please, please, nothing. Okay. Yeah. And so it's at this point where we're introduced to, you remember her name? Melissa? Is that her name? I don't know. I'm asking you. She's got a very Russian name. She she does, doesn't she? Yeah. I'm like, what up with that? I will say she's uh, looking pretty uh, amazing. She is sexy as fuck. She is. I am grossed out by her as time goes on. Yeah. She she comes on real strong. She does a lot of mouth stuff. Yeah. And she's willing to just bang on a married man. Bang away, darling. <laughs> she has two kids of her own. She's not married. No, her husband left her. Pamela. Pamela. But she's got like a really nice apartment, too. Yeah. I'm like, damn. Well, he's if gotta I pay- was your lover. He's got to pay child support. She kind of seems like, like a Russian or a Itali- Italian, maybe, but maybe Russian, like mob mole. Mole? Mall. That's what they call them. Okay. Like Gretchen a, Mall. Like a... Like a Gretchen Mall. Yeah. And so he starts like, hey, getting a little cutie eye with her, you know? And he starts using the fact that they have children and know each other through their children to... You know, see her a little bit more. She asks him out to go to have lunch or dinner with them. Ice her and her kids and his kids to celebrate the anniversary of their father abandoning them all. And sure enough, she starts giving him the cutie eye. Yeah. And he bowed it, you know, and his kid even rats him out, I think. We had ice cream with this whore. He made me go with this dumb girl and her whorish mother. Julianne Moore's like, what up with that? But she is like interesting (laughs) but and this is the the aspect of the movie that i was the least clear on is justin bartha yeah he's barely in it justin bartha from the hangover yeah he's playing jasper bernard yeah who at first because we first are introduced to him early on after a table reading and he's weird jasper i had a puppy named jasper that's funny because my last name is bernard (laughs) he's trying to flirt with her he he is but he's also like terrible yeah he can't remember things and he says something like really weird like safe regard right like the dog right yeah he's just like okay and he gives like a really awkward hug so i thought maybe he's just like a sycophant no he's like the lead he's probably more famous than her could be he's an up-and-comer he's the justin bartha of the crew yeah and the, uh, the dickhead director, he comes up to her and he goes, uh, I know you come from movies, but if you could emote. And she's like, God damn it, it was a table read. Yeah, I he's like a that. dickhead. He is. He's a, he's like a, what do they call that movie? Waiting for Guffman? He's like the guy from Waiting for Guffman. Christopher Guest? Yeah. Whatever his name is. In yeah. The movie. But so throughout the picture, throughout the picture, we see at one point Justin Bartha giving her an unsolicited semi-rough shoulder rub yeah and it just sort of wipes out it doesn't really linger it doesn't really suggest what then occurs isn't right? this after she realizes the company's cheating on her no oh i before. don't believe so no yeah. but after she realizes when they're doing the performance at the end again he's like trying to like kiss her face and he's got his hand like on her tummy and then she just turns around kisses on the lips and slaps him a little bit and walks off. So it's unclear. Like, has he just been pawing at her this whole time and she's just been allowing it? I think she maybe likes the attention. Because time has progressed. Because she does not care for Duchovny. She even is like, True. you know, he's he's horny and he really wants me. And that makes me not want to give it to him. Well, that, I did not like that line. That line hurt my feelings. Well, well and at that point, she's already kicked, kicked him out. Yeah. Right. So so he's banging, on, he's banging away on Darla, right? And... Uh, they never make it clear that he's cheating on her until he is at the sexual... Well, they go to a hotel. Do they? And he then they, you see them together in the shower. What? Yeah. Oh, wow. I somehow missed that? Yeah. They go to a place. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's a hotel. And, and then it jumps to him showering, and she comes in from behind him and kisses him on the back. And what does the fuck? Around. Yeah. Yeah. And, but then they don't show it thereafter. I did not see this scene, so when it cuts to the meeting and he's mm-hmm. like i'm having an affair i was like i, I wonder if he is maybe he's just yeah. trying to deal with his feelings and he's not really having an affair he is because right after that he then takes the subway home and he's like 
sitting down and his legs are st- extended and a gal has to like step away. Oh, sorry. You know, and he moves out of the way or whatever. I thought it was her. It looked like her, like her from behind, but so we, we, they do establish that he's cheating on her, but we don't see anything until later when they're in her apartment. It pretty much goes radio silent from there on out. He mentions it to Billy. So right after one night out, Jill and Hall and Crudup can't find the car. It's been towed. Yeah. And it's snowing. <laughs> He's, he's worked so hard to not have it towed, and here we are. We're yep. towed. But this is a legal spot. They, they didn't tow this guy's car. And she's just had enough, and she's just like, what the fuck, dude? I have wasted seven years of my life with you. I need you to find somewhere else to stay tonight. And she runs off, and it looks like it's about to cut, but then it looks like they stitched in an extra scene, so you see her get into a cab. So you're not worried about her. And I believe at that point, she calls Julianne Moore right when they're about to get their thing on. And he calls David and they're all like, oh man, she's pissed. And she's like, girl, what happened? You know? And But it's not him calling. It's the affair partner. He thinks it's oh, going to be Billy. But that's right. You are absolutely a thousand percent correct. Thank you so much. And yeah. And he's like, oh yeah, girl, I was hoping it was you. This might still have been before... Right before they, we see them consummate their carnal, savage love. So, Hall's free. She does apparently send in that photo. <laughs> yeah, very good. So, so they've been separated for a few weeks, and uh, he runs in. Billy runs into Eva, and he, he he's like, "Oh, hey, girl," and she's like, "Yeah." Um, this is this is also a pretty good moment in the movie. Sterling though. K. Well, no, the soup. The soup. Billy Crudup is startled to see her and is just like, eating soup. Yeah. Eating soup. <laughs> yeah. That's like, that's, that's, that's a, an explanation of what he's doing. Eating soup. That was a very Paul Rudd line reading right there. I not, think. not we are eating soup. Eating soup. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Ava Mendez is like, hey, why don't you come to this clubby club that Sterling K, his name is? Rand? Rand. Is it Look really Rand? Guy. It is. I was thinking lard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, lard. And Billy Crudup even goes, what kind of a name is that anyway? So she's like, come down to the club. And Sterling's like, I don't want this tool at my shit. Oh, he d- I thought he seemed like he kind of liked him. He did once he saw his email was Ass Man 204 or whatever. Because when she's inviting him down, he's like, baby, what the fuck? And he's giving her the look. He's not saying anything. And she's like, well, what's your email address? And they had established earlier that it's Ass Man 205, I think. And so he's trying to spell it in a way where it, it instead of just saying it, A-S... S-M A-N-2 O-4 at AOL.com As soon as she writes it, you see Sterling's eyes just light up. (laughs) And he loves it. Uh. And he even goes, when they walk away, my man. (laughs) That was fucking classic. So, Julianne Moore and Maggie Gyllenhaal go out to a bar, and they're seeing James LaGrosse. Fuck, bro. What's his name? I forget. Bart? Bart? No. Garth? Dante. Dante. You were. You were really good. Well, I was just working off that energy that you were sending up to me. And boy, in any other movie, I would have been all about Dante. What? I mean, I'm all about him, but it just doesn't feel right 100% of the time. You're a minister? Yes. Yes. Don't worry. Ministers are free to fornicate. In a better picture. He is gross and stupid. Well, it's yeah, it's it, hilarious though. It feels like a character from a an older mid career Adam Sandler movie, or like a dodgeball. You know, he's sort of aloof. Did older. you know? Hey, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. That's right. And he's doing a and he's singing too. He's doing the songs. Air travel makes me ill. Think I'll take another pill. And he's just a fucking idiot. And in all the greatest term, uh, all the greatest way that that term can embody my adulation for his character. And, and so Julianne Moore's like, yeah, I told him about you, girl. And he takes care of business. He used to do it in the college. And she's like, oh, my God. He's very attentive. Is that what she says? Very attentive. That means he eats the puss. Tastes as good as ever. <laughs> so that's basically where we go. Can we insert performs cunnilingus yes I, you know i don't really like saying puss puss is pretty gross i don't like it's weird it's like dick's one thing cock cock it's, you don't like cock i don't like cock. cock's a powerful word it can be yeah i don't think it works well in a general context 
with a long-term partner. I used cock in a stand-up set one time. Oh, nice. I, a few times for the same joke. Yeah, knowing you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, one of the people was laughing hysterically as soon as I said it. Like, oh, this is inappropriate. I can't believe you just said that. Yeah. It's like poop, you know? It's like, yeah. it still tickles you. Yeah. A little funny, you know? So he's eating her out <laughs> quite rapaciously. He's eating, he's going to Arby Town. She's not interested at all. No, at first it seems like maybe she might be, but it's weird because she's like seated with her back against the headboard and he's going down on her in that position. It's like, no, you got to lay down, relax, you know? He pops up and he goes, you taste amazing. God damn, he's so gross. Which he said to Julianne Moore after he kissed her. Yeah. And she goes, um, could you, could you, could you stop doing whatever it is that you were just doing and leave to his credit he's like oh all right you know (laughs) and so billy's been pining for her this whole time and he's outside her apartment at this point elaine and james comes out like oh no man she's sleeping but and he he does that uh finger brush of his mustache yeah that like really clarifies he's just been eating some vagina yes it's so fucking gross yes and he goes you're you're up there with her yeah bro and i was in it so Billy's just like, fuck, she moved on, I guess, you know? To this to this uh, model, <laughs> I don't know, I, Billy Crudup, will never match the beauty of, of, Dante. Old, of old greasy mustache. Yeah, and his pipes. God, everything that comes out of his mouth is just like upsetting his his accent and his pretentious vibe yeah david has told billy that he's having an affair julianne moore suspects he's having an affair and she tricks or goads rather billy into inadvertently spilling the beans that david's having an affair and maybe a little bit before that is when we meet what is it is it dieter what is his name goran is the character's name glenn fitzgerald yeah He's like a real, like, Billy Crudup calls him like Sprockets at one point. And that's like exactly what, the, you remember that old comedy? Yeah, of course. Sprockets. Sprockets. Best German television presents Sprockets. Of course. You're not a child. And she goes, well, he's got a big cock. So I don't give a fuck. And he's he talks like this is, and what's this man's doing in my house? Is, and, yeah, he you know. pluralizes everything and then Billy calls it out. Right when you're thinking, this is so stupid. Why is he doing that? Then Billy calls it out. Mm-hmm. But Billy kind of goes a little hard on him at dinner. Yeah. And it's not attractive. It's not a good way to win Maggie Gyllenhaal back. And the company's been at the... Uh, Sex addict meetings. He has been, right. Which are the dumbest shit in the world. That's the thing that I don't like. It's funny, but it, man, they're really playing it too hard for the laughs. Yeah, that's, I, uh, at first I was like, oh, this this might be refreshing, going to like a, a sex addiction, mm-hmm. I want to say class, but meeting. It, yeah, like an but, AA, but for sex. But everything's a joke. All of it's just extreme stories from people about going really overboard. And then right. he makes up a story about using cold cuts. Well, so I wrote it down, right? Because, yeah, this woman is like spilling her soul and he's just eating a sandwich. And she turns to him How's the sandwich? I like that part. Just because he's a dickhead for eating that sandwich. It makes no sense that he would be doing it. Yeah. But to have somebody call him out on it, that's pretty good. Because then I wrote this down a verbatim. When the host of the meeting is recapping, she goes, all right, so let's see where we're at. John is not happy unless he can fit his penis inside a hard, inanimate object. He's got shades on. He nods. And he goes, preferably coarse. And then she goes, Sarah, you had a relapse this week. Again, putting yourself in danger with a power tool. And Gordon, the sex you're having with your wife's mother and your wife's mother's sister is putting your home life in major jeopardy. It's like... I hate this. This is a cartoon. It's so... it It's really insulting, too. Yeah. So David goes a little raw. First, he introduces himself as Toby, but then he's like, I'm having an affair. And they re- they show the room, and they're just like... <laughs> That's not how it would be, though. I feel like they would be very supportive Mm -hmm. because his actions are going to affect or are ruining his life. Right. But regardless of what it is, it's sexual related. Yeah. And it's ruining his life. Yes. And so he goes, "Uh, but I I also like her to cover me in in cold cuts. 
And the room perks up. Oh, oh, this is good. This yep. is freaky. You're like us. We're freaky. One of us. One of us. <laughs> yeah, right. It's total garbage. Yeah, man. I hate it. Jim Gaffigan's there, though. Yes. And he's not really doing his Jim Gaffigan character. He's really no. just acting. I think he's the one who's having sex with his wife's mother and his wife's mother's sister. But yeah, he gets the one line because David's like, oh, I don't want to. I'll pass. And he goes, are you going to eat your fucking sandwich and not talk, man? That's bullshit. Boy, so Julianne Moore knows he's cheating. He is cheating, but he feels bad. And he tells her we shouldn't continue to cheat. And she's turning Justin Bartha away. Justin? Yeah. Yeah. And Billy's trying to get Elaine, but she's with Gorin, who's a complete fuck stick. She tells Julianne Moore he wants to have a baby, so. And Julianne Moore just gives her the best Elaine Bennis look ever. Like, hmm child <laughs> good luck with all that and uh the whole time billy's with his bob alaban and he keeps like he has a weird fear of death and it's crippling his interactions in life he, you go we're gonna die i mean that seems like that's probably the basis for his retardation and it is not yeah. growing for the last decade well and it's appropriate that's- not not re, you know retardation as you're supposed to use it his, mm-hmm. his growth has been retarded should we find a different can the robot put a new word <laughs> we'll in get all for sorts me? of crazy with it yeah no you used it correctly good job want a chalky bar and, and but balaban balaban and he's he he for some reason wants to know about him and he catches him on the phone one day. And it's so deflecting, he, man. So he's creeping in his car, listening. It's super dumb. He's like hanging out the window. It's super dumb. It is craning super, his super neck dumb. and pitching his ear. And Bob's just having a regular convo. So later when we see them, he's like, look, man, you've been following me. What? What's your deal? You want to know that I had a heart attack? That my parents neglected me and my mother had weird sexual things? I think it's time to terminate your therapy. I'm sorry? It's like, get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> and so... You've been Bella banned from this office. You know it, right? And he's calling Elaine. He's leaving fucking... He's stalking, essentially, at this point. So Duchovny's like, when his wife throws him out, finally, she's like... You should leave, Tom, until you figure it out. We can't do it for you. Right before dinner. Mm-hmm. He has to leave before dinner? Yeah. That's rough. Yeah, after he I punched in the nuts twice. And so later we see him with Billy, and now he's not having Billy's shit. David's one. David's like a Jerry Seinfeld in that every time they try to raise their voice, it's like me. It's like it just becomes a cartoon. I'm sick of this, he says to Billy. <laughs> I'm losing my wife. My wife. I, this is probably as good a moment as any to talk about what a terrible actor David Duchovny is. Boy, I always think about him in Zoolander, where he's trying to be serious, but in a funny way, and it's just coming off as completely bad. He's always exactly the same. Hey. Like, as though, I don't know, he had facial paralysis? Like, he's not able to mm-hmm. convey many emotions. Mm-hmm. He's got, like, no range as an actor. He has dead eyes. He has, yeah, okay. There's nothing going on there. And I, I, I like him in stuff. Yeah. But they put him in lots of stuff. I like him in. And that means most things are bad. I liked him in Evolution. You remember that? Yeah, I, that movie's terrible. Yeah. Orlando it's, Jones? It's Julianne Moore. Oh, she's, okay. Hey, hey, we did it. Cracked the internet. There you go. Uh, but no, I, I think he was fine as Mulder. Yeah, I think that's that probably was, the key thing for him is being Mulder. That was his role. You know, he didn't need to be anything except a robot. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Scully, the truth is out there, hombre. That's like, that's his wheelhouse, man. Mm-hmm. It's so weird when they try to spread him out and have him do a bunch of things. He can be effortlessly charming, but boy, when he's got to be charming throughout an entire picture, it's just not working. And they've been they've been running him for thirty years now. Yeah, it's been the Duchovny show. Mm-hmm. Do you have it? I do. Okay. This so this is we're going to be touching on this a tiny bit too. But this is an article from OK Magazine, and they say uh, he's one of the most enigmatic and elusive stars in Hollywood. <laughs> In reference to David Duchovny, <laughs> like well, I guess he's uh, wooden. Maybe that's why he's enigmatic. But yeah. like, who's trying to hunt him down and find out what makes him tick? We're watching a movie where he plays a sex addict. He, was he a sex addict in that Californication show? I believe so. Which sucks. I hate that show a lot. Was he like a porn? Uh, he's actor? an author. Oh, okay. Hank Moody. Okay. I keep getting uh, confused with Hung. Oh, Hung was much better. <laughs> so he's playing sex addicts around this time. Like, what the fuck year is it? Two thousand five. 2000- 2000, no, the when he gets in trouble with Taylor Oh, yeah. 
at some point after this, I think it was 2008, he ended up having to go to rehab for sex addiction mm-hmm. because he was cheating on Taylor. Again, does not sound like sex addiction. Right after this, right? Yeah. Jesus. Sounds like uh, somebody is cheating and got caught cheating. Yes. I don't think that's really sex addiction. That's just it. So when he's in the group, sex addiction would be he's having affairs with multiple people constantly just so any masturbating is not like even like affecting your life gorgeous women right just who, encounters who are fawning over you and they're 10 years younger than you. well because here's the deal pamela's fly right she's totally into him she has no problem with seeing him even though he's married but isn't asking him to leave her probably just th- he leaves and she's totally fine with it she doesn't you know it's like the perfect scenario for a mistress his wife doesn't want to bang him right you that's the I mean? other side it's of like, the thing she's his, his wife's not meeting his needs at all after the the vhs scene you're you know it's not like justified but you're kind of like god damn she's I get it. cold-blooded you know maybe inadvertent but I, she doesn't want to fuck him she doesn't she, like him not only that but she doesn't even really want to talk about it or no you know give him a handy Ugh. give him a handy mandy so, he, yeah, he starts taking it seriously, but immediately tells a joke where he's lying. And they're all just like, ah, ha, ha, ha. He goes, look, I've been lying the whole time. My name isn't Toby. It's Tim. It's not Tim. It's Tom. And I don't do the meat stuff. I don't know why I did it. You know, I thought you all were freaks. And I am having an affair, and it is ruining my life, though. And they're all like, oh, tell us more. You know, we, we love you now. And then he says something to cut the, the break the ice. It's a fabrication, though. And so, but everybody's like, oh, cock, 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 you know, and they're doing trust falls. And- That's another thing. No, mm-hmm. never in a million years would they do a trust fall no. at a fucking uh, sex addict meeting. So there's a moment, there's a woman that's in the meeting with him. But right when he's about to do his trust fall, and they're like, turn around and fall, she all of a sudden darts from the right side of the screen to the left to really support his head. And I'm thinking, oh, no. She's a sex addict. He's a sex addict. Are we going to have like a late in the movie real conflict? No. I mean, it doesn't do anything like that. She's literally supporting him. So him and Billy make up kind of bro-like. He comes in like, oh, is it too early to drink? And he does a thing. And so him and Billy have a guy moment. And they're like, you know what, brah? It's all good. And he even goes, you the man. Nah, you the man. You know, Billy goes to the club. Sterling isn't there. This is a little while back. Eva tries to bang on him. And that's what propels him to realize that he doesn't want to do this. That's when he goes to Elaine's apartment and right. James the Gross is coming out. Yep. And so he's just been hounding her the whole time. And and she's still with Gorn, which seems not right. You think she'd Did be he over. harass her or what? You think she'd be over the, the, the big dick because there's nothing else going on with that guy. Gorn. Well, I think it's just the he's stable. To, and but wants to, to what have end? Kids. He doesn't no, I have know. A, he's not a citizen. We'd establish that. And he can barely speak, and who knows whatever the fuck else he's up to. Yeah. Right? He's serious, and Billy is not. <laughs> I guess. Toby. Mm-hmm. So they're like, we got to get our women back. Oh, this is so lame when they're like, let's do this. So this is when we see Julianne Moore. Um, is it rebuff? When you rebuff somebody? Yes. Yeah. When she rebuffs Justin Bartha. But it's it's, I, I liked it. You know, it was a nice little kiss on the lips, and then a gentle slap. We're done here. Right? And so she goes out, she performs her thing. Apparently, it's legal for women to act. I didn't know when that happened. The king. The king decided. Did he decree? Yes. Shit. I must have been sleeping or something. But no, men play men and women play women. Right. No mucking about. Oh, Jesus. Is it illegal now to be a woman if you're a man? Yes. Shit. That falls under tomfoolery. Damn. Oh, that... You don't want to fuck around with a tomfoolery charge on your record, boy. No. Try getting a shack after that. And so they, they're at the thing. They're at the play. Uh, Elaine's there with Gorin, Maggie Gyllenhaal, and blah, 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 blah. And Billy's there. He's got his hair slicked back. He's got his goatee in full effect. David's there. He's trying to win back Julianne Moore. He's trying to, he steals flowers from a vase. And the Usher's like, no way, bro. Hey, oh, come on, man. Give it to my wife. Fuck no. He's, you need to leave. And he goes, well, get rid of this note, please. And he's just like, man, I ain't doing jack shit. So he runs. David runs. So you can't run in the theater. And the usher walks after him. You know, and Billy runs some sort of a passing blocking play of his own to, to bring that back, that attempt at a sports reference back. And he goes, hey, you can't do that, mister. And he'd go after Billy, right? 
So they finally usher back into the theater. They're trying to duck and cover until they can plan their moment. He, uh, Billy does push Goran down at intermission like a fucking baby. He's still fucking... They're tugging on her. Goran's like, we should leave things. And he grabs her arm. And Billy's like, no. And he grabs her other arm. And I hate just, this. They're about to rip her in half, man. Yeah. If a one thing that a woman... I mean, there's multiple things women don't like. But if there's one, it's grabbing her by the arm. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they like that. You see it all the time in movies. I don't like it either. If Jenny walked away from you and you grabbed her arm... It'd be a problem. Yeah, she's either going to punch you in the snaz or she's going to kick you on the rocks. One time when we were in college, we went to Dairy Queen to get some hamburgers and sit down in there in St. Cloud. Mm. And I go overboard on ketchup. Okay, you're like, one of those. When, when I'm eating French fries, I really like some you room temperature ketchup. Shovel them. I was like squirting a ton oh, onto my plate and yeah. she grabbed me by the wrist. <laughs> and she was like, <laughs> I was like, are, is this really happening? Oh, <laughs> what man. Are Talk you about doing? a surreal moment. It was fucking crazy. Yeah. We still joke about that now. Yeah. So we're at the point now where. Can we touch on the, the stick metaphor from earlier? I always thought of a relationship as two people holding a stick. You know, sometimes the stick is short and you're close and you can you can look into each other's eyes. And other times it's, it's, it's long and you can barely see the other person, but you both always hold on to your end of the stick. You don't let it drop and i was like is this a good metaphor for love hmm. i was kind of i kind of thought it was a little bit good i'm on the fence a little bit but it's know, coming back real quick here i don't know i understand why your grip would be shifting on a stick well i think the stick's length is changing it's just a you know it's just a sh- shrinking and expanding stick right <laughs> Of it's the more of a, a retractable baton. When it's warm out, it gets bigger. When it's cold, well, I it think shrinks. It's, you know, when you're you're growing apart but still in love and mm-hmm. struggling to stay together. Mm-hmm. God, Stick. there was a, a line on The Simpsons that was basically like, "Love is just a constant battle to see who has the most moral superiority." That came from Marge. Let's paraphrase. Don't look it up. Who cares about moral superiority? I, I don't know. They go to church though. So yeah. So we're you know. God, there. David Duchovny's like, I got to do my big thing. She's about to do her last line of the play. The ushers are breathing down our necks. He just gets, and they're just stepping on people. He grabs a guy's hairpiece and he rushes down to the stage and he lofts the note upon the stage while everybody's throwing rose petals or whatever because it's a standing ovation. And Billy tackles the usher and she's like, what? And she sees the note and it says, I am a husband. I am a father. And I love you? I guess. That sounds very close, but slightly wrong. Yeah. The last line, I think, is off. This is the life I want. I am in love with you. I forgot to turn the oven off. That was it. <laughs> yeah. And the kids are home. <laughs> I was watching the kids. Uh, Got a real Manchester by the sea situation here. Yep. Yeah. Oh, so she grabs the stick. Then and she pulls him on stage. Pulls him on stage. And the usher runs, runs up and he goes... She goes, no, 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 he's with me. This is my husband. And what does the usher say? This loser? And Julianne Moore, and, and dignified, she goes, this loser. <laughs> it's true. Right? And they kiss, and everybody's like, yay. I but hate it this. it ain't over yet. No, I'm going to really, we got a long talk about how terrible this ending is. This is very unearned, very concerning as well. He, Billy's just man-baby mode. He's about to poop his panties, and he just goes, hey, Everybody's like, oh, what? Crowd separates. They're on the other side of the aisles, you know. Man, I don't want nothing to do with you. I'm with Gorin now. He's got that big cock. Mm-hmm. And and some old lady's like, is this a part of the play? Yes, 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 uh, it uh, is, uh, ma'am. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 it is. Yes, it is part of the play. Uh, uh, this is the part of the play where we come together and never leave each other. And it, it, Somehow I feel like it, it was written a long time ago, and I just... I just didn't trust the script because I don't want to die. Why do I always have to be equated with death? I'm also like a man now. So like, if you don't want to be with me, I'll accept that. And she goes, Toby, I love you. Akiba, you know, and uh, her anime voice. Yeah. And uh, he goes, oh, dope. Because I was lying. I couldn't live without you or let you go. I was going to kill myself tonight. Oh, that that too. (laughs) Murder, suicide, pack. And they embrace and... uh, Hard cut to a wedding. Yep. Our boy, James, James LaGrosse, LaGrosse, is back. He's officiating it. Yeah, he is. And they're doing, and she, he goes, till death. Oh, record scratch. Don't say death, because he's still an idiot. And he, they get married, and he runs out because their car is being towed. 
But instead of bitching and moaning, what does she do? Go get it, baby. Because she's about it now. I liked this movie uh, so much more than World Traveler. Yes. It's, was it much, much, much better? I think because it it was so it was such a tonal shift throughout that it's like oh it's to the good movie again and now it's back to that yeah oh, oh you know where world traveler was just like this it it moved along nicely mm-hmm. as opposed to world traveler that just wallows yeah boy i, <laughs> I so as much as I, I liked some of the movie where I, I i felt like the relationship drama stuff that felt real that felt like it came from maybe bart's actual relationship or somebody's actual relationships mm-hmm. that stuff i liked yeah. the attempts at comedy not at all fuck you so much every mm-hmm. time he tried to be funny i said fuck you this is stupid yeah this feels like a precursor to um a judd apatow type movie yeah the humor so <clears throat> where they dated where too. he's so he at the, that brief period where he was good and popular <laughs> like a two movie window <laughs> where he was really able to it was still crass and a little toilet humor but it was there was an earnest sort of aspect to it that when you see steve carell with a massive heart on and he can't pee first off it's identifiable i, I know that hard on can't pee yeah in the morning, i, I know that hard on can't pee vibe you know but it, it the yeah, it's, it's just so endearing. I think everybody, to some extent, is at least serviceable, if not enjoyable. Yeah. If not good. James LaGrasse is great. Maggie Gyllenhaal is really good, considering how petulant and cloying and just daffy her character is. Everybody but the company. Yeah, Julianne Moore is solid. Billy, I don't really like his character, but he's still relatively enjoyable to look at. David Duchovny's got a few hot moments, but yeah, boy. By and large, he's just uh, phoning it, but trying, which is sad. I don't know. What do you give this movie? 5.5. 5.5. 5.5. That's solid. I'm going to go de- with the five. I'm okay, just going to yeah. go right up the middle. It doesn't deserve a six. No, 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 no. Six means I like this movie, but it wasn't that good. Mm-hmm. 5.5 says <sighs> it was a movie and it was okay. Six could also be it's a good movie. I just didn't really like it. Yeah. Also, you know. But a five, it's just sort of that right in the middle there, you know? I don't regret having watched it. No. You know, otherwise wouldn't have needed to have seen it. Don't really need to see it again. Which just seems to be a lot of the reviews that were on IMDb. Just like one lady's like, or one person, I guess. I don't know if it's a lady. They're like, this movie came out at a time when all these other movies are coming out and I just forgot about it. And after watching it now, I kind of wish I would not have remembered it. <laughs> That's fucking on point, man. Yeah. I hate yeah. the cover, too. Hey, what what trivia you got from this movie? Oh, the only trivia was um, there, the woman that he cheats on, her son, I think, is Bart and Julianne. Julianne's son. He is redheaded. And at the end, oh, they have sex on a plane. Him. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's like, he's a writer now. There. And that stewardess is, I'm sorry, that flight attendant is like trying to pick him up. Yeah. It's like he's sitting next to a middle-aged woman. Chances are, this is his wife. But there's a, the their daughter- She's sitting there, and the camera just pans by her in a way that is showcasing her, and she's got blazing red hair. I'm like, I bet that's her daughter. And it was. That's the only trivia, man. What'd you get, Billy? This is a tough one. Oh, hey, we should probably rate James LaGrosse for no reason whatsoever. Oh, yeah, man. You know what? I'm going to give him a seven. James? Yeah. Yeah, Almost went with an eight, but I think just the material and the direction kind of gets a little... He's so wonderfully gross. He seems predatory a little bit at the beginning, but... Yeah. Seven sounds good. Hey, what would you give him in World Traveler? An eight. Nice. Yeah. He's pretty good in that, and his hair is amazing. Yeah. He... (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Billy. Ah! I'm going to go with a six. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, I'd give him a seven. I felt like he did this guy real well. I didn't care for this guy. He looks real stupid. That's my problem. But Billy embodied it wonderfully. It made me think about Billy's range when he's playing this fucking dickhead. That's the problem I face, man, is that, yes, he's selling it. But what he's selling, I'm not really buying it. Well, it's not his fault. The script sucks. True, but it's like, how much can you give credit to the effort if the overall execution is just, you know, you know how it goes. Man, that review is so spot on because there's so many forgotten movies that you absolutely would never think of again. Mm-hmm. Nobody would hunt this movie out unless you were trying to watch it because somebody specific was in it. Next week, we're going to be shifting gears. Yeah, we're going hard action. 
Did I do that right? Because normally when I do the songs, bum, Jenny's like, bum, that's not bum, right. Bum, 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 Better do. Better do. Lalo Chiffron, I think, is the name of the person that conducted that. I'm pretty sure their name is Mission Impossible. You're damn right. We're going to be doing Mission Impossible 3. Yeah. A Billy Crudup joint. Yeah. This is where it starts to kick into gear for me because I'm a action nut. Oh, that's true. You know, I love it. You can hit us up on Instagram at We Doing Filmographies. Yeah. You can do the same thing on Reddit and Facebook. That's right. We Doing Filmographies. Yeah. We're also on uh, YouTube. We Doing Filmographies. Yeah. Surprise, everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what? You can also uh, find us on Twitter. Yeah. Boy, Twitter. Do filmographies. That's really the place to be, right? <laughs> so good. Mm-hmm. You can go ahead and hit us up on the hotline, 763-634-1897. That's right. Call and leave us a fucking voicemail, 763-634-1897. Yep. We <laughs> are also part of the Now Playing Network. That's Yay, right. We did Everybody, it. head on over to nowplayingnetwork.net. Find some other cool podcasts. You could check out supporting characters. Bill Ackerman talks to writers, bloggers, podcasters, publishers, programmers, and more about creative endeavors and film culture. There's a whole bunch of different shows on there. Gossip Prego was. Mm-hmm. Well, I've been Jason. And I've been Jules. And we doing doing film oh. movies. <laughs> <laughs>